What's going on everybody and welcome to my February 2018 tutorial video. This tutorial video is going to be on game states and I'm going to be showing you how to use something in C Sharp called an enum to keep track of what state the game is in and we can actually use that enum to perform different actions depending on what the game state is in. Um, so it's a really useful feature. Uh, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, but I think it's something very useful that you should definitely be using um, and it's something that you may not learn about in some of the uh, low-level tutorial videos um, So I did want to share it with you all and show you how you can use it in your game um, I'm going to show you how to use it in my turn-based strategy game um, I think this is very important for a turn-based strategy game and without further ado Let's jump right on into the code All right So here we are in my game controller script and if you do want to follow along all this code is available on my github repository for this game Which I do have linked in the description below um, Anyways, we're first going to declare this enum um, and we want to do a public enum uh, by the way, we're making sure that we want to do this outside of the game controller class uh, because this is something that we want to be able to have access to from other different scripts. And so it just makes it a lot easier. So we just do a public enum and then I call this game state. Uh, this is just a variable name here. Uh, so you can call this whatever you want to be. It can be game state or if you want to do a player state, you can have a player state or an enemy state. Uh, really anything you want can go here. Um, and then within these brackets, you're actually going to define the different states that you have. So for my particular game, I have player select tile, player select action, player move unit, player attack unit, enemy turn, and game over. Um, so then again, you just close out the bracket and end with a semicolon, of course. Um, so it's just a one line declaration and uh, basically what I have here are four different actions that the player can take um, an enemy turn state and a game over state and again these can just be named whatever you want and you're gonna want to tune these specific to whatever your game is so now within the actual game controller class we're gonna want to declare a new game state variable called cur state and so this basically just keeps track of what the current state of the game is and then scrolling down just a little bit uh, in my start function here here's where I actually set the initial game state um, so for me in my game player 2 starts by default that's just how I have it right now I could be changing that in the future um, but so if you are player 1 we're gonna set that curse state variable to game state dot enemy turn and if you're player two, we're going to set the cur state variable to game state dot player select tile. So basically, this cur state variable is just of type game state, so you can store a game state type in there. Um, and the way you access those game state types is doing um, whatever you call your state variable type, and then dot whatever state that you want the game to be in. So again, this is a name that you created, and then these right here, this enemy turn and player select tile those are the things that you defined within the brackets after you declared your enum. So that basically just shows you how you can set your current state initially. Um, now let's actually do something with the game states. So right here in the update function we're actually going to use what's called a switch case. And so a switch case is basically a much simplified version of if else statements. So instead of saying if the game is in this state do this else if the game is in this state do this um, basically it just cleans your code up a little bit so you just do switch and then we have that current state variable and then here we can actually define what happens in the different cases uh, so we'll write case game state dot player select tile so this is what happens when the game state is in the player select tile case if the game state is in the player select action state then this is the code that will be executed moving along here's the player move unit um, so this one's a little more complicated the player attack unit this one is a lot more complicated and then for the enemy turn game over they're pretty simple and uh, we also just want to put uh, a default case in here and this is what would be executed if the game goes into a state that we haven't defined so say for example if we added in a different game state uh, up in the top in those brackets there 
uh, but we didn't define it within the switch case and it ended up in that state um, then that's where the default case would hit and so for me in my case I just uh, have it returning an error because I don't want that to happen and theoretically that should never happen because I have uh, defined all of my different cases within this uh, switch case statement. Now I know it's probably not the best coding practice to have a lot of this stuff within this switch case here. Um, it would be nice to break it up into different functions a little bit more. Uh, but basically you get the idea. Um, every frame it checks what the current state of the game is in and then um, we can do actions depending on whatever state the game is in. So I mean if the game is in the player select tile this is what happens when you uh, push the left mouse button, for example. And then so let's say later the cur state variable gets changed to the player select action. And then this code would actually execute when you hit the left mouse button. So that's sort of the coding side of it. And I'm just going to show you what this looks like actually in my game. All right, so here we are actually in my game. And in this case, we're player two. Um, so right now we have the game state as player select tile. Um, and so basically what that means is I can select a tile. And so right now, just clicking on tiles, nothing happens because there's nothing on the tile. Um, if we do click, say, an enemy, then in this case, I have my code programmed to where it selects this enemy, and then we can see some stats about this enemy. Um, now, if we click on one of our players here, we'll also see some stats about this. But you'll notice the game state changes to player move unit. And now, because the game is in a different state, um, clicking on an empty tile will actually move the player to that tile. Um, and you'll see, actually, the way I have it programmed is after you move, if you have the ability to attack, it changes the game states into player attack unit. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any enemies in range, so there's nothing we can do. And now if we say click another unit on our team, this will move to player move unit. Um, and if we click on an enemy, it'll bring us back into this player select tile state. Um, and then finally, if we say, you know, move this guy around, actually we can attack this guy here, so that'd be cool. Um, and then we'll move this guy, say here, don't have any enemies in range. Uh, so now there's nothing more that we can do, so we'll end our turn. And you'll see once we end our turn, the game state is in enemy turn. And right now I just have it so when it's the enemy's turn, you can't click anything at all. Anyways, that's just a very brief overview on C Sharp enums and how you can use them to keep track of game states and how I actually use them in my turn based strategy game. Um, I hope that made sense to you. If you do have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to clarify anything um, or share my reasoning behind um, some of this code you know, a little bit further if you would be interested in that. Anyways, I really hope you find this video helpful. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave this video a like. Uh, also, feel free to check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe. Um, I do weekly vlogs about my game and uh, I'm trying to do monthly tutorials that really take concepts that I find interesting and unique and show you how they fit into the overall scope of a game. Um, right now I'm using my game as an example. Again, all the code is uh, linked below. It's in my GitHub repository. Um, definitely go check that out if that's something that you find interesting. But that's just about all I got for this tutorial and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace out. Thank you.